It's another Q&A edition of Optimal Health Daily, episode 525, and I'm Dr. Neil, your host of the show. Welcome back to another special Friday edition of Optimal Health Daily, where I answer your questions. On the other days, I read health and fitness blogs to you, kind of like an audiobook, with my commentary at the end. Now, the reason I call myself Dr. Neil is, well, first, most people don't know how to pronounce my last name. They often butcher it, so I figured it's just easier to call me by my first name but I do have my doctorate degree in public health with an emphasis in chronic disease prevention and nutrition. My degree is similar to a PhD, but what's different about it is that not only did I do research as part of my doctorate, but I also did some clinical hours. So I worked with a lot of patients one-on-one. And in fact, my research focused on those with type 2 diabetes and those that wanted to lose and maintain their weight. I'm also a registered dietitian nutritionist, a certified health education specialist, and a certified exercise physiologist or personal trainer, same thing. I hold faculty positions at three different institutions, and I'm also chair of the Department of Nutrition and Basic Sciences at Bastyr University, California. So needless to say, I love talking about this stuff. I'm super passionate about it, and I love sharing this information with you. So let's jump right to it here today's question and start optimizing your life. Hi, my name is David, 57-year-old man, uh, following a plant-based diet. I'm working out three, four times a week, and I'm having a problem um, building my chest uh, muscles. The rest of me is uh, getting lean and and, uh, muscles are building, but chest I'm having an issue with. I was wondering if you could help me. Um, I've tried a variety of exercises. Thank you. Hi, David. Thank you for your question. You mentioned that you're getting lean, and it's wonderful to hear that whatever you've been doing so far has led to noticeable results. This is not easy. So I hope, if you haven't already, give yourself a pat on the back for what you've accomplished so far. As you know, it's not easy to change the way you eat and continue to stay active on top of it. But the fact that you have done this is wonderful. Now, normally, I get a lot of questions about building ab muscles, like how do I get a six pack? Or How do I get cut like the guys from the movie 300? So it's kind of refreshing to hear a question about this other vanity muscle, the chest. Now, I've mentioned before that my wife has said on multiple occasions that my shoulders aren't the most developed, especially when compared to some of my other muscle groups like my triceps. She said that my triceps are too big, which makes my shoulders look small in comparison. I'm not bitter about that or anything, even though I've mentioned it many times on this show before. Anywho... The one thing I have failed to mention is that she's always felt that my chest muscles were well-developed and actually in proportion with the rest of my body, except my shoulders, of course. So I feel like I can confidently respond to your question given the results my wife and I have seen with the exercises I do for my chest. If you'd asked me about how to build up your shoulders, I probably couldn't help you. I'll start by saying something that most folks don't like to hear, especially when it comes to their lack of progress. Genetics can be to blame. The next time you're at the beach or the pool, take a quick glance at the various shapes and sizes of your fellow gents' chest muscles. You'll notice that they vary quite a bit. Some of that is, of course, due to how they work that muscle group, but some of that is also due to their genetics. So if you're looking to have a chest that looks a certain way, just know that with consistency, you may be able to get really close to that ideal, but chances are your muscles will still look a little different. Now, I keep referring to the chest or pectoral, same thing, as if it was one big muscle. In fact, it's made up of two main parts, what we call the pectoralis major and pectoralis minor. These can be then split into different parts too. There's the interior and anterior pectorals and the upper and lower pectorals. I'm gonna assume that you want all of these to be well-developed, so my suggestions will target all of these areas. What I'm about to share is likely not earth-shattering, but rather fundamental moves that have been shown over time to be effective. The key is to mix things up by altering grips, rest periods, sets, and repetitions. So I'll start by mentioning the basic moves that need to be a part of everyone's chest routine. Try and predict what I'm about to say. I bet you'll be right. First, push-ups. Second, flat bench press. Third, incline bench press. And fourth, dips. Now this last one may be a surprise to you, but it works. You may think, whoa, wait, aren't dips for building triceps? My answer would be yes, absolutely, but it's also a great chest move with one slight modification. I'll come back to this. So these four moves are fundamental, 
and really should never go out of style. But again, say you're already performing these chest exercises but aren't seeing the results you want. Then you need to change your rest periods, your sets, your grip, and or repetitions. What do I mean? First, let me start with a structured workout for beginners using the four exercises I just mentioned. Once we've established a beginner workout, I'll show you how we can modify it. So a beginner's workout for the chest might look something like this. After a five-minute warm-up like walking or a light jog or on the bicycle or elliptical, you could do one set of barbell presses on a flat bench. You could substitute dumbbells here too, that's perfectly fine. Try and pick a weight that you can lift eight to 10 times. So basically, you're performing eight to 10 repetitions. Then rest for two to three minutes. Next, perform one set of barbell presses on an incline bench. You can substitute dumbbells here too. And again, pick a weight you can lift eight to 10 times. Rest again for two to three minutes. Then move on to doing one set of wide grip dips to muscle failure. Now, I mentioned earlier, dips are of course a wonderful tricep move, but they can also be a fantastic chest move. To do this, what you wanna do is before you begin the dip, so imagine your arms are locked, holding your body above the dip bars. When you're in that position, lean forward just a bit so that your chest and your head begin to face the floor. Maintain this position during the up and down motion while you're performing the dip. You should feel your chest muscles begin to engage. Again, do as many reps as you can until your muscles give out. Then, again, rest for two to three minutes. Finally, perform standard push-ups until your muscles fail. This means your arms should be about shoulder width apart, your chin touches the floor each time, and you lock your arms out at the top of the move. That's it, you're done. Again, what I just mentioned is great for beginners. To mix things up for those of you that are more advanced, the possibilities are seemingly endless. But let me give you an idea of what it might look like using these same four moves. So again, after a five-minute warm-up, let's say you do a pyramid of flat barbell bench presses. This is where you would perform 10 reps, followed by nine reps, then eight reps, and so on, all the way until you get down to one rep. Each time, increase the weight by a little bit. So as you decrease the number of reps, tack on a little bit more weight. Rest only 30 seconds in between each set. So when you move from performing 10 reps down to nine reps, what you'll do is you'll tack on more weight, rest for 30 seconds, and then perform the nine reps. If you perform these correctly, you would have completed 55 repetitions total with just this one move. That's because 10 reps plus nine reps plus eight reps plus seven reps all the way down to one rep equals 55. All right, so let's say you do that for flat bench. You're gonna rest for two to three minutes and then you're gonna move on to the incline bench. And there you could perform 25 repetitions without stopping. Note, you're gonna need to select a lighter weight here, a weight that you can lift 25 times without stopping. Once you do that, rest for two to three minutes. Next, perform two sets of dips, each until muscle failure. Remember, before we did one set. Here, do two, and rest two to three minutes between those sets. Lastly, perform two sets of push-ups until muscle failure, resting two to three minutes between sets here too. Again, that was just a sample. You could use the pyramid idea for every chest exercise. In fact, something I love to do is to go up and down the pyramid. That would be something like this. Perform the standard pyramid where you do 10 reps, then nine reps, then eight, etc., resting only 30 seconds in between and gradually increasing the weight each time. Once you're done with that full pyramid, so you've done 55 repetitions, rest for two to three minutes. Then start at the top of the pyramid. So you would perform one rep, again, using a heavy weight because you're supposed to be adding weight each time, then rest for 30 seconds and then do two reps using a slightly lighter weight. Rest for another 30 seconds and then perform three reps at an even lighter weight. And eventually, get all the way back up to 10 reps. At this point, you may not even be able to hold the bar up anymore with no weights on it. That's because you would have just completed 110 reps, so I wouldn't blame you. Sometimes my entire workout is just going up and down the pyramid for those four exercises. So I'll do the same thing for incline bench, dips, and push-ups. And I should mention that I usually only work my chest like this once a week. 
Of course, I do other routines throughout the week that might involve push-ups or something that uses the chest, but I really only have one day where I focus on this muscle group. Now remember, you can begin altering the rest periods between sets and exercises. Maybe between sets, you only rest for 10 or 15 seconds instead of 30. Or maybe you take three deep breaths and then jump back in. Between exercises, maybe only rest for one minute instead of two to three minutes. You could also mix up the order of exercises to see how your body responds. Maybe start with push-ups, then incline bench presses, then move on to dips, then do flat bench last. You could also vary the distance between your hands for each exercise. Sometimes use a narrower grip. That'll work the internal pec muscles. Other times use a wider grip. That'll work the anterior pec muscles or those muscles that are closer to your shoulders. I think you get the idea. Now, the last thing I'll mention is to work those supporting muscle groups too. So don't neglect working your shoulders, triceps, and back as well. Because you'll likely find that if you pay some attention to those muscle groups too, your chest will thank you. Thank you again for your question, David. You'll be entered into a very small raffle every month to win a book. And if you want to submit a question and have a chance to win books, it's really easy. You can call in. The number is 61 I Love OHD. Or you could submit your audio question at oldpodcast.com slash ask. That'll let you record your question, listen back to it, and then submit it to us. Again, that's at oldpodcast.com slash ask. All right, that's another week of Optimal Health Daily in the books. Thank you for listening every day and all the way through. Thank you for being a subscriber. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you back here on Monday where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this show and Optimal Living Daily, the brother podcast of this one. Literally, I'm Dr. Neil's brother. If you like the format of this show, you'll love Optimal Living Daily too, where I also read to you from blogs, but cover other topics like personal development, finance, and minimalism from bloggers like Derek Sivers, The Minimalists, Zen Habits, and many more. So for more amazing content read to you for free, come subscribe to Optimal Living Daily too, and together we'll optimize your life. You've been listening to Optimal Health Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift, as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us, and remember, your optimal life awaits.